So I'll tell you a little bit about uh, quenches and a little bit about entanglement and uh, the talk rests on recent work uh, with Anatoly Demarski. So how it works? Oh, with Anatoly Demarski. And uh, here is a, a short outline. So I'll uh, start from introducing uh, introduction where I will definitely just define, motivate, and review recent results on uh, quantum quenches and entanglement in this uh, context. Uh, uh, then I will proceed to CFT correlators, quenched CFT correlators. So in principle, uh, uh, they are, uh, in certain cases, they are very much voluminous. So these are very intimidating expressions. So I will present just uh, some uh, parts of this, uh, or, or I will present correlation functions in some limits where the expressions are nice and uh, still you can just see what happens. And I will re will uh, finish with, uh, will end up with some summary and open questions. Uh, so here is the introduction. So quenching, I guess most of you know what it is. It means that uh, we introduce some time dependent parameter into the system, into the Hamiltonian. It can be external field or just time dependent coupling. So for the purpose of this talk, uh, uh, so we, uh, I will focus on global quenches, which involve uh, uh, critical or conformal point at the initial uh, um, state or uh, at both ends, initial and final. So the system will be prepared in uh, vacuum and then we gradually turn on some uh, uh, coupling so in this case, uh, we have some conformal field theory Hamiltonian and uh, introduce some relevant deformation. Why relevant? Because we want to just deform our UV CFT slightly a little bit. So the deformation will be small, at least in the UV limit. <coughs> and delta T will denote characteristic time of the quench. So there is, uh, uh, and uh, for the purpose of this talk, we will be interested in the limit when, when delta T becomes very small, very short, while the uh, amplitude of the quench is fixed. So in general, this time-dependent problem is very challenging and uh, it's hard to understand the dynamics. So uh, we basically, some regimes uh, are tractable in two-dimensional conformal field theory and uh, there are also tractable regimes in, con in uh, free field theories uh, or own vector models in the limit of sudden quench approximation. So there are lots of papers and I pro mentioned uh, some of them which are highly cited and well known. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, so why to bother if this is so complicated uh, uh, system, complicated dynamics, why to bother solving it? So uh, here I give you some uh, list uh, of reasons why to do the quenches. So one, uh, the first one uh, has to do with kibble zurich mechanism. So in principle, you study some uh, dynamics when uh, uh, you pass uh, through uh, the critical point and then uh, what you can ask various questions about correlation functions, how they uh, decay in time or stay, uh, remain finite. Uh, or it, and at what rate it happens. So <clears throat> uh, perhaps uh, intriguing uh, motivation has to do with uh, uh, recent uh, uh, development in uh, cold atoms where actually following the evolution uh, of nearly isolated system uh, became something that you can observe in the lab. So you, know, you do some theoretical construction cal calculations and then probably some of them you can even check. So there is also adiabatic quantum computation, but most of the efforts, uh, I think, are around uh, thermalization. Uh, so uh, to make the story short, let me just summarize uh, this effort in one question. So basically, uh, we ask, does the full closed system serve as a good heat bus for itself? so that subsystems can be described by statistical ensemble, at least in some effective uh, way. So uh, obviously in this context, entanglement is a very useful tool because you consider well, some, some small subsystem, you ignore all the rest, so you integrate out the rest. So even if you are in pure state initially, you end up with some entangled state 
and then uh, following the evolution of this entangled state uh, may te might tell you if uh, indeed it can be uh, described effectively as some uh, statistical ensemble or not. <clears throat> so, uh, so what is known about it? Again, there are lots of uh, papers uh, in the field, so let me just mention one of uh, the paper by Hong Liu and Josephine Such. So they analyzed the holographic setup where you have a collapse uh, thin shell that collapses in the bulk, forms a black hole, and they calculated entanglement entropy in general dimension for such a system, and this is basically the result. So for early times, early times, so the delta T, again, this is exactly the, the, the width uh, or characteristic scale, uh, time scale of, uh, of the quench, so uh, in their paper, they want to make it as short as possible. They basically send it to zero or close to it. So, so for times that are much larger than this delta T, but much less than some characteristic equilibrium scale, so this is basically the time of relaxation or how fast the system reaches the equilibrium, they found quadratic growth where A sigma is the area of the surface, uh, T is time, and epsilon here is uh, energy density pumped into the system. Now, if you go, uh, uh, if you consider late times, late times means that you start uh, probing the system uh, at times which are much larger than equilibrium, uh, equilibration scale, but still shorter than the scale of your uh, surface, entangling surface, then they found very nice uh, behavior uh, which is basically linear growth of entanglement, found also in many other setups. <clears throat> For example, in the paper by uh, uh, Hartman and Maldacena uh, that was mentioned earlier today. So, uh, so here, S, this S is, uh, uh, is uh, entropy, in density uh, in the equilibrium, and V is the so-called velocity, so it's uh, uh, in general, it's a very ugly number in, according to my standards, so it's something not intuitive. Uh, but uh, what is nice about this shape is that it is very simple, it's just linear growth. It's probably the simplest possible dynamics. So, uh, <clears throat> so the question is whether we can understand it because, uh, as I said, uh, well, understanding evolution of entanglement in this quantum quenches might explain or tell us something about uh, thermalization. So, uh, so one of the possible attempts, naive attempts, would be to uh, do sort of conformal perturbation theory. So you just uh, uh, assume that you are still close to the fixed point and you just expand in the amplitude of the quench. So this is what, uh, what is done here. So let me just motivate it uh, uh, in a naive way, sketchy naive way. So, uh, if, so to probe these regimes, you can just take plane flat plane because uh, in this uh, expression there is nothing about curvature of the surface. So you take flat plane, half space, so it's uh, sufficiently good. Uh, of course, in this case, uh, the system is infinite, so you do not expect any thermalization. It will take infinite time, but at least uh, these two regimes should be captured well enough. So in that case, you have only two scales, at least at short times. You have, uh, uh, you have this delta T scale, uh, the, the amplitude of the quench, and the time of observation. So, you can, uh, so entanglement is dimensionless parameter, so you have two dimensionless uh, parameters here. So <clears throat> if T is of order delta T, so this, uh, para this uh, uh, variable, this dimensionless variable is small, and, uh, small or, or of order one, then for delta t, as delta t goes to zero, this is something small, so you can expand. So this is why uh, for early times behavior, for early times you can expand, do some naive, uh, not naive, but just uh, conformal perturbation expansion. And this is what is written here. So you have as uh, entanglement entropy, uh, sort of delta is missing here. So entanglement entropy is basically the expectation value of the, um, uh, of the modular Hamiltonian in the state that depends now on time. Asym in the asymptotic past, it was just vacuum of the CFT, but then, of course, it, it becomes excited. So, you, uh, 
So this is the entanglement entropy, and then you can start expanding both sides, including K, so you get all kind of, uh, uh, kind of correlators here, and uh, I suppress the integrals, so the, in principle the expression here is uh, very uh, complicated, well, involved. So, uh, so for early times, um, you can ex do this sort of expansion, conformal perturbation theory, uh, but of course uh, the, the, the main uh, challenges to get to this late times, how to get to this late times. So let me first, uh, so I will not answer these questions uh, completely, but I will sub at the end of the talk, or close to the end of the talk, I will, sub uh, I will tell you what kind of calculation can be done to basically access, uh, probably access this regime. So first I want to re uh, uh, start from the correlation functions because they play an important role in this calculation that I will be telling you. Uh, <clears throat> oh, this is not what I expected. Uh, well, this is because of uh, chaotic talk by Hon. Okay. Uh, so, okay, never mind. So, in, in general, of course, you can, uh, uh, well, the question of uh, quenched correlators is much more general because uh, without any re uh, relation to entanglement, you can ask all kinds of questions about it. Uh, say, uh, well, what kind of late time impact of quench of quenches, so the correlation functions presumably contain this information. You can ask whether there is some interesting univer universal scaling of correlation functions in uh, generic uh, quenched conformal field theory or quantum field theory. So correlation functions are interesting objects by themselves without any uh, uh, relation to entanglement. So, uh, so first, let's understand what kind of uh, what kind of hierarchy of scales we have in uh, in the system. So, uh, a naught here is the is the UV cutoff. So, we assume that uh, a naught is the shortest uh, scale in the problem. Uh, well, ideally, if the system is UV complete and it has UV fixed points, then you can just set uh, a naught to zero. So, there is no cutoff in the problem. It's the uh, shortest. So then, uh, th then delta t, as I mentioned, we will be interested to take it very short. Um, uh, so it will be the next scale to come into with the game. And L, the scale of uh, associated with the deformation of the, of the Hamiltonian, uh, will be the longest scale. So of course then, if you consider correlation functions uh, with typical separation, uh, which are much smaller than this L, okay, both uh, temporal separation and, sp uh, and uh, spatial distance, if they are much smaller than L, then all scales are shorter than the scales that you introduce, and then conformal perturbation theory should be fine. And <clears throat> so you can uh, do it, uh, but in principle, because uh, delta T goes to zero, you might wonder whether we can just employ simple, uh, uh, simple, um, uh, simple framework of sudden quench approximation. So, uh, so people in the old, some people in the audience answered this question. Uh, well, uh, I guess you can read it. So, um, so sudden quench approximation is not necessarily applicable in this limit. Um, well, uh, this question was addressed. Uh, uh, if, in the beginning in uh, the context of holography or strongly coupled uh, field theories by uh, Alex Butchel, by people from Perimeter Institute, Alex Butchel, Louis Lenners, Rob Myers, and Anton Van Nieker. Uh, so they found the form. So they consider it basically quench, holographic quench, and uh, this is, these are the results that they found. So uh, <clears throat> again, uh, lambda naught is uh, just uh, the characteristic amplitude of the quench, and as delta t goes to zero, these are leading behavior up to all kind of uh, numerical coefficients. So as you can see, if you take your, this delta, this, the uh, scaling dimension of the operator, uh, bigger than d over two, then as delta t goes to zero, both energy diverges and the uh, one point function of the operator of the deformation diverges. So this is at odds with, uh, with a sudden quench approximation, obviously, because in the sudden quench approximation, the assumption is that the state is continuous across the quench. And if the state is continuous across the quench, you do not expect any singularity at the uh, 
at the instant of quench because, uh, well, vacuum expectation value of, uh, of dimensionful operator is zero in conformal field theory. So therefore, uh, it's a, a little bit at odds and therefore the conclusion, uh, the upshot of this calculation is that uh, sudden quench approximation is not necessarily a, uh, a good protocol uh, to describe uh, uh, to describe uh, the, the quenches in the limit of delta t goes to zero. Uh, so of course, uh, in the beginning, I, I guess the, uh, the worry was that maybe this uh, scaling is associated with uh, strongly coupled system, holographic system. So therefore, uh, uh, Schmidt does, Damian Galante and Rob Meyer, they just repeated this calculation in the case of free field theories where there is no coupling at all and found basically same behavior like here. So, and uh, they both, they also suggested a simple uh, dimensional analysis uh, that explains the scaling. Uh, the dimensional, this dimensional analysis rests on uh, word identity. So first of all, uh, so this word identity is of course non-perturbative. So it's, uh, it's uh, exact. So if uh, uh, lambda was constant, then uh, uh, basically the energy would be conserved. But because of non-constant lambda, you pump in uh, some energy into the system. So the, uh, the, you only care about uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, one point function in the region of quench because outside of this region, uh, this derivative vanishes. So in the region of quench, uh, T is of order delta T. Therefore, you have only two scales, the amplitude of quench and delta T. And there is only one way to construct, uh, well, by dimensional analysis, only one way to construct right dimensions. And uh, therefore, uh, integrating uh, over, uh, over, the, uh, over the quench, of the, uh, so you just get, uh, you just have to, you, up to numerical constant, you have to multiply this answer by uh, the amplitude. That's it. So therefore, <clears throat> one has to be very careful about, uh, uh, about uh, correlation functions. If you take delta t to zero, you have to basically compute them from scratch. And there is alternative uh, explanation of this uh, behavior but rest, uh, that rests on uh, just uh, uh, rate of the vacuum decay. You can calculate rate of the vacuum de decay, which is uh, just imaginary part of the effective action. And this is what you get in this case. So as you can see, if uh, delta uh, greater than d over two, then asymptotically for large omegas, uh, the probability that the system will uh, uh, be excited to the states grows uh, because the spectral function just grows. So as you, you increase, you decrease delta t, so lambda omega becomes very wide in the, in the Fourier space and, uh, and this omega diverges as you go to uh, higher omegas. So therefore, basically what happens as you decrease delta t, your, your system, you, you excite uh, high, um, high energy modes. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. So now, uh, if you wish to calculate the, uh, cal uh, the correlation functions uh, you in this conformal field theory approach, you have to employ, first of all, conformal uh, perturbation theory and uh, Kelder-Schwinger formalism. So here is an example, simplest example of one point function. So to leading order, so exp you expand states. So to leading order is just vacuum state, which is zero of course. And then to next to leading order, you get all kind of integrals over time with uh, um, vacuum expectation value of the commutator. The commutator comes from the expansion of these two states, of course. So then you just need to, uh, or in the Kelder-Schwinger formalism, you just expand along this contour, your state. So you have uh, insertion of O either on the upper side or, low, or a lower side of, this, of the contour. And this is what uh, brings you to uh, the commutator. So, uh, so you can evaluate it uh, exactly uh, because uh, basically the commutators or the ordering of operators you get uh, by correct I epsilon prescription will continue from Euclidean uh, correlators with correct I epsilon prescription. And uh, say in this case, simple case, uh, this is the final answer for the one point function. So you can see 
here explicitly is that if you take your key inside uh, the region of, uh, of quench or quantum bump in this case, so without loss of generality, you can just set key to zero, and then you just basically can see the previous scaling. Uh, but on top of that, you can also identify situations when, uh, when the scaling receives all kind of logarithmic corrections, because this integral diverges if key sits inside the, it's inside the, the, the quantum bump, then this integral diverges at the upper bound. So therefore you expand it, so you have uh, power law divergences, but if you expand it uh, to sufficient, to higher powers, uh, you expand lambda around this key, so you get also logarithmic uh, divergences. And you can identify them uh, just from this expression. Uh, well, of course, for, la for keys, for, for times which are large in comparison to delta t, so this part just decays. Because uh, if key is large, then uh, there is no scaling that I showed you before. You just see that this integral just goes to zero. But of course, for, for times that are sufficiently uh, far away from the instant of quench, you should not trust this calculation because uh, perturbative conformal perturbation theory becomes not reliable. <clears throat> So you can also, so here in this example, of course, you call, we, uh, I, I just uh, showed you how the calculation, how the final answer looks like for expectation value of operator that has same scaling dimension of, as uh, operator in the, in, in the deformation, but you can consider other operators, then you have to expand to high orders, and then, of course, expressions, uh, final expressions become very complicated, all kind of apple hypergeometric functions kick in. So uh, note also that not all one-point functions decay as t goes to infinity. For instance, uh, energy, uh, the one-point function of the stress tensor, uh, it's a conserved, uh, conserved current, so therefore it does not decay, and in fact it uh, stays constant and diverges as you take delta t to zero. Now you can do the same thing for um, uh, two-point functions, of course. So and so these are various limits where the two-point function simplify. <clears throat> uh, so in this case, uh, I present you what happens if you consider, if you insert two uh, primary operators at some, when, at some point uh, during the quench, so this T sits inside, the, inside, the, uh, inside this bump, so say T equals zero, uh, and x, the separation between the operators is very large. So in this regime, this is the scaling that one gets. And now this delta 1, delta 2 are arbitrary. And as you can see, if delta 2 is sufficiently large, then again, you will get this divergence as you take delta t to 0. So the correlation functions will explode. So in fact, to get this result, it's not really necessary to do hard uh, calculations because in this limit, when all the operators are far away from each other, you can do OPE of, uh, and this is what uh, this, this form suggests, the OPE of each of these operators with the primary operator that participates in the deformation of your field theory. So, uh, of course, you can also consider the opposite limit, but the opposite limit when delta x is much less than delta t, I already told you what happens in this limit because, we, because in the opposite limit, again, you will do uh, OPE of these two operators this time. And then the whole, uh, the pro then basically this, uh, you, you come back to the calculation of one point function and this is what it, what it is. So what happens, so therefore if you insert, if you have two operators inside uh, uh, this bump, uh, uh, so uh, the scaling of the operators at short distance and at large distances uh, changes. So there is some flow of the scaling. And, uh, uh, and moreover for certain, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, for certain dimensions, uh, the scaling actually is, will be amplified as you take delta t to zero. <clears throat> so, okay, so now, uh, so I told you some story about uh, the correlation functions and the question, of course, okay, how do we calculate or how do we access um, uh, the linear growth of entanglement because hope I convinced you that basically naive conformal perturbation theory should not capture this, resu this uh, result. Um, so, uh, so here 
uh, is a suggestion for the calculation that we uh, try to pursue. So instead of considering, let us consider a conformal field theory by def uh, that is deformed by a uh, slightly relevant operator. That means uh, operator of conformal dimension d minus epsilon. In the static regime, we know what happens. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this deformation uh, takes us away from the UV fixed point and uh, takes to us to the IR fixed point. And this IR fixed point is within epsilon distance from the UV fixed point. So basically, the whole flow happens uh, uh, between uh, two points in, in the vicinity, in the neighborhood, in, in the small neighborhood. So uh, therefore you have, uh, so th in this situation you have uh, this, opera, this extra small parameter epsilon and uh, uh, you can expand both in short delta T and in epsilon. Uh, <clears throat> of course there is some subtle question of uh, the relation between what you take first to zero delta T or epsilon. Uh, but uh, up to this subtlety it's uh, clear that from this setup that you can at least for this class of series with, that, uh, um, uh, that are deform that you get by deforming the, the, the conformal field theory with this relevant, slightly relevant deformation, you can access uh, 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 this regime perturbatively in epsilon. So, and of course, apart from, uh, from this question, you can also ask what happens with universal scaling of, uh, uh, of spinning operators, especially operators, uh, uh, especially conserved currents, etc. And, uh, and if uh, indeed there is some success in this sort of calculation, then of course you, the next question to ask is what happens with effective temperature of the series and uh, in the regime of past quenches and uh, what kind of ensemble actually describes uh, these setups. Okay, thank you. So everyone's looking forward to beer. <laughs> okay, well, if not, um, let's thank the speaker again. Okay. Um,